leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. I took slight licence because I knew I was answering the next question as well. Um, my Lords, the UK's position is that Bahrain remains a foreign and Commonwealth office, human rights priority country, as set out in the 2018 Human Rights Report. Uh, this assessment was reached entirely independently, but draws on a number of different sources, and I assure the noble Lord we keep this under constant review. Last week I met the brave Bahraini human rights defender, Abdisam al Sayeg who spoke to me about her torture and sexual assault in detention and the ongoing, of, uh, the ongoing detention of female prisoners, political prisoners, including Najjar Youssef, who has endured similar abuses. Fawaz al Hassan is the chief of the security complex where these women were abused and a beneficiary of a £16,000 UK taxpayer-funded training event in Belfast 2015. So Abtisam has asked me to ask the Minister on what basis is the UK continuing spending taxpayers' money to train Bahraini officials who are implicated in human rights violations? First of all, as a noble lord will, be know, will know that the cases which um, he has uh, related, as well as other cases, are something that we regularly raise bilaterally with the Bahrainis. In terms of the support we give to various bodies, including the oversight bodies, uh, oversight bodies in Bahrain, we provide technical assistance to Bahrain to influence and support change. And let me assure the noble lord that all training that's provided is in line with international standards and fully complies with our domestic and international human rights obligations. And whilst we are doing that, I fully accept the point he's made. And we raise with issue, let's not forget Bahrain is a party to the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. They need to be reminded of their obligations. But Bahrain has taken uh, reforms. It continues to do so. And we believe it is because of our relationship we're able to have a very candid conversation on the cases he's raised and indeed other cases which are currently live in Bahrain. I want to return to the question because I don't think, on this is one occasion, I don't think the Noble Lord, the Minister, has given an adequate response. The fact is the UN Committee Against Torture's verdict was that UK-funded human rights oversight bodies in Bahrain are not effective. So what is the Foreign and Commonwealth Office doing to properly assess and understand what is going on? Because it is UK taxpayers' money being used here which is actually also leading to more executions than ever before. The Noble Lord is right to raise the issue of executions and in, on the issue of death penalty specifically. Um, my understanding is between uh, 2010 and now there have been three executions, uh, which are three too many, and we continue to, of course, express concern. I don't, uh, the noble lord said, um, normally we find ourselves generally in agreement on human rights issues. But I do believe, I differ from him, that our support to Bahrain, I believe, is helping in safeguarding women's rights. Women's organisations are active in Bahrain, freely run campaigns calling for equality, especially on citizenship rights. But let me not take away from the fact, do issues and serious concerns remain? Of course they do. But I believe our engagement helps to address those issues. Non-engagement, non-support, particularly on training, so ensuring that the training and standards of people responsible for these institutions is at a higher level, I believe, is a way forward. Not doing that training, I believe, will be a step backwards. Friend, say what progress has been made on improving the rights of, after all, are the majority of the Shia population. Because in the past, it has always been alleged that the top jobs in the military, in the public sector, uh, have not been available to the Shia population. There is, in fact, discrimination against the group that, in fact, constitute the majority of the population. First of all, I, I, I thank my noble friend. I think he's somewhat promoted me to a privy councillor, but uh, uh, I, I thank him nevertheless for in addressing me as the right honourable friend. But my noble friend is right to raise the issue of the Shia majority. And I assure you there have been reforms which have taken place, including the reinstatement of citizenship, for example, to members of the Shia community. But he is also quite correct, and I share with him the deep concern that, for, that the Shia majority remain and unequal in their representation, unequal in their ability 
to gain the kind of access that the Sunni minority does. And it's an issue we continue to raise. We will continue to work with Bahrain. Bahrain is a partner. We have many strategic interests. And I believe that lends itself to being able to raise these issues of deep concern with the authorities. My Lord, my Lord, on the 10th of July, the, For the Foreign and Commonwealth Office published an admirable paper. There was a marvellous photograph of the noble lord, the minister, on the front. A guidance note entitled, UK Support for Human Rights Defenders. And the guidance note makes it very clear that the UK, through its diplomatic posts, should support human rights defenders in a variety of ways. As we have heard, this is not exactly what is happening in Bahrain, and almost all non-violent critical voices have been silenced. A number of these people are now in prison, living in appalling conditions. Could the Minister assure the House that when our new ambassador to Bahrain takes up his post next month, he will support human rights defenders, he will put the admirable guidance note into practice, and he will have more confidence, perhaps, than in the past, in raising cases with the government when necessary. First of all, I'm, I'm delighted that the noble lady noticed my photograph, so I thank her for that. Um, on the more pertinent and important issue, on the guidance, I think it was right we issued that guidance. And to be very candid and upfront with everyone, it took a bit of time to get to the point where we were able to issue the, that guidance, but we did it hand in glove with human rights organisations, including Amnesty International, and I'm grateful for their support in this respect. In terms of specific cases, of course, I agree with the noble lady. Our new ambassador, as our current ambassador does, will raise these particular cases, and we have been very active. We spend much um, of our resource. We quite often receive inquiries from human rights defenders, such as uh, Sahid al Badai, and we respond directly to them. There have been numerous parliamentary questions. And let me also say to the noble lady, we have raised specifically the cases of Bahraini nationals, including Hajar Mansur Hassan, Sayyid Nazar al Wadai, and Mahmoud Marzur, uh, Marzouk Mansur at senior levels within the Bahraini government. And the Bahraini government has also been clear that these convictions are not related to the activities of Mr. al Wadai himself. We will continue to remain vigilant on this. And I look forward, of course, to working with noble lords on this important issue. Yeah. 